Hey guys, welcome to the channel Pretzel Cosplay and today I want to show you how I made the bracers for my Demon Hunter costume. Ooh, bracers, yeah! <laughs> so if you want to know how I made them, then keep watching this video. Uh, learn more about crafting with Warbla by buying my book and also be sure to check out my ebooks. In my webshop you can find several detailed tutorial books about my costumes. And my digital patterns. If you need some help with pattern making for your costumes, be sure to check these out. First, I start by making a pattern. I will link to this pattern uh, in the description below, so you can also get it. Then I transfer it to 2mm craft foam. That's the green things. <laughs> and I also cut it out of Warbla two times, so I can sandwich it. Then I heat up the Warbla. This is Warbla's finest art, the most used version of Warbla and also the oldest. Um, I need to heat it up in order for it to get sticky and flexible and workable. And as you can see, the color changes. The color changes to a darker brown. And you can also feel that it gets flexible and sticky. Then I put one of the foam pieces on top and I put the other warblad piece on top of that. Now it's covering the foam piece. And because there's a warbla on top and underneath, it's called the sandwich method. With my hands, I push it together on the sides. When the warbla is still hot, I use some scissors to cut out my shape. I need to be careful not to cut off too much, because then the warbla sandwich will open and the foam will show again. When working with warbla, and when you heat it up, you will sometimes get some air bubbles, but these are really easy to get rid of. Just poke a hole and push the air out. And then your warbler work is flat again. I made two parts for this bracer. So the part is mirrored. And then I need to add them together. So what I do is I first heat them up so the warbler will get soft and sticky again. And then I will just align them together and push them together so that the glue in the warbler forms a bond. It can be really hot because when you heat up warbler it gets around 70 degrees Celsius and maybe even hotter depending on the setting of your heat gun. And when the warbler is still hot, I can start to shape the bracer, so it will actually form nice around my arm. So I'm just pushing it in the right shape that I want, and ah, there's an air bubble again. So we'll just poke the air bubble, push out the air, and make it flat again. This is because of the heat, and the air will form bubbles underneath because of that. So just shape it and when it cools down it will stay in this shape that's the good thing about warbler the bracer would be really boring like this so i want to add some details i made a pattern for a nice detail on the top of the bracer and now i'm cutting it out out of five millimeter thick plastazote foam plastazote foam is a really lightweight foam Maybe you can see it a little bit on the video that it's really light. And then I can just cut it out using some scissors. I also want to sandwich this piece with Warbla. And for this I'm using Black Warbla. Black Warbla is more smooth than the brown Warbla. But it is a little bit more breakable and not as easy to draw on because, well, you need some metallic markers. So that's why I'm using the black warbler for the details, because it's smoother and needs less priming in the end. 
I'm just repeating the same thing that I did for the bracer itself. So I put one piece of warbler and then a uh, the piece of foam and then another piece of warbler on top. And then I close it on the edges, just using my fingers. Also the black warbler stays warm for not as long as the brown. So in between I need to heat it up sometimes so I can uh, work with it again. But, but that's fine. And the nice thing about different colors of warbler is that you can use them together. They all have some uh, glue inside them that is activated by heat and they will all stick to each other. With warbler really your imagination is the limit. And then I cut out the shape really carefully because with a thick shape like this it's easy to cut too far and then you open the sandwich again and you don't want that because it ruins the edges. And then it's done, the detail. And I'll try out how it fits on the bracer and if I like it, I draw the line where I want to attach it. This helps me to, um, to get it on the right spot when it's actually heated up because when I don't put it on the right spot, when the warbler is heated up, it will stick and it will be really messy to get it off again. So for the cleanest result, result <laughs> it's the best to, um, to put it on the right spot immediately. I keep see saying result, result. I just keep making the same mistake. Do you also have some problems with uh, different languages? <laughs> Obviously English is not my language. So I just press it on with my fingers and make sure that it sticks. Then I finish the edges a little bit by going over it with a wooden clay modeling tool. And then I want some more details and to determine the patterns for them I first put some painter's tape on the armor piece and then I will sketch the shape of the detail. And then I take off the tape and put it on a piece of paper. I make the pattern neat by drawing over it again. And then I will cut it out. I will transfer this pattern onto 2mm Eva foam, craft foam, because that is thick enough for these patterns. Then I cut it out of the foam and stick it together. I make this out of two shapes because it saves foam. <laughs> so it, it's just economic reasons and the environment. Then I heat up some warbler again that I want to use as a sandwich. And we just repeat the same process. So heating up the warbler, putting the foam in between warbler, pressing it on the edges with your fingers. <laughs> Cutting it out carefully, heating up the armor piece and the detail, and pressing it on the armor piece. By now you know how to do this. <laughs> it's not really hard, but this method can give you some really, really interesting results. Then it's time to add the gem. I want a white base for the gem, so I just cut out a little piece of white paper and I'm going to put this behind the gem, so I don't see the brown from the warbler through the gem. Um, I didn't film the actual attaching of the gem, but it was not really difficult. Uh, what I did is I took a scrap of warbler, you, you see me doing this here, <laughs> and I would fold it a couple of times, so I would have a thicker strip. This is just a scrap, you can do so many things with the uh, warbler scraps, it's amazing. And then I sculpted it into like a pyramid shape. So it would be a really nice beveled edge. And then I would put it on the gem, but I didn't film this. <laughs> so this is the next step. This is adding some stripes to get some more detail on the racers. And with the modeling tool I add some more depth to it. 
And then the last stripes are added on the front of the bracer on the tip that goes over the wrist. And be sure to heat up both the armor piece and the details that you want to add because the glue in both warblasts needs to be activated. Otherwise the details will fall off eventually and you don't want that. So that's how the finished bracer looks. So that's how I made the bracers for my demon hunter. I hope you liked the video and that it was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and be here for the next video. Bye bye! <laughs> I have a frog in the throat. <laughs>